And we at CNN News 18 have been reaching out to voices from Canada. In the latest, former Canadian MP and Health Minister Ujjal Dosanjh, who is also the first person of colour to have been the Premier of Canada's British Columbia, spoke to us in an exclusive to CNN News 18. He talks about Canada's inability to control organised crime and Prime Minister Trudeau's failure to denounce the Khalistani elements. Let's listen in. India's external affairs ministry has stated that the visa application process has been paused because India's high commission and consulates in Canada have been facing security threats that have impacted their day-to-day -day working. In your experience over the years, are Indo-Canadian relations at the moment at their lowest point? Well, they absolutely are at the lowest point. They were quite low at the time of the nuclear test India had done way back some decades ago. Um, in fact, then when I became the premier, I was invited on a state visit by uh, uh, the Prime Minister Vajpayee. Um, and I think that was the first time the Canadian High Commissioner was able to see anyone in Indian government uh, for years, <laughs> first time in years. Uh, because they, the, the High Commissioner went with me and actually told me. So I think that right now, they are actually uh, at the lowest ab, uh, ever. And um, I, don't, I don't foresee uh, any change anytime soon. I think that there is, uh, you know, we can sort of get into allegations and counter-allegations. It, it's not helpful. But the, in the current situation, the government of India, I think, somewhat legitimately, doesn't trust Mr. Trudeau. Right. Um, he has he is seen to be uh, very close to Khalistanis, and he is seen to, uh, you know, I know that uh, many Khalist he has had many Khalistani supporters and advisors. And that's him. what I'm going to get into now. The Canadian Prime Minister's allegation of India's involvement in the killing of uh, Hardeep Singh Nijjar. This without the Canadian police or RS, uh, RCMP, as it's known, did not even complete its investigations. And that, of course, has been viewed as absurd and motivated by India, also as a knee-jerk reaction by several foreign policy analysts. I'd like your thoughts. Well, I, I think that, that you know, I, I, I take a somewhat different view of that. If he has credible uh, evidence to suggest that there was India's hand in it, then I think he has an obligation to do something about it. How you go about doing that is a different matter. If you raise it to the level of a, 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 a statement in parliament, you stand yes. up on, on the first day when the parliament is back in session and you stand up and accuse another country, then I think it beca becomes more difficult unless you have some evidence to back it up with. And back and it up with credible evidence because what he did in the parliament had no evidence. I think Canadians are, many Canadians are asking the same question in the sense, where's the beef? We used to say, you know, in old times, uh, where's the goods? And I, I think that, um, that, you know, if he has evidence, uh, I must say that I never believed India would do something like this. But, you know, I was listening to the former raw chief Dulat in an interview where he said, you know, this is not India's policy. India has never done that in the past. Um, and um, but you know countries change. I mean, Mr. Mr. Modi is macho Modi, as you know. I I I have to say that to you. I look at Mr. Modi and I look at the kind of policies he has. Um, therefore, uh, in my estimation, if I look at India's muscular approach to international politics, sometimes too muscular for my liking, uh, I can believe that uh, tit for tat is possible under Mr. Modi. So it's not far-fetched uh, from my perspective, if I look at it objectively. But, but you know... We'll if, know if once you, the evidence arrives. Yeah, but, if, if you but if you accuse another government of doing something dirty, then you have an obligation to, uh, to put the evidence on the table. The, the other question I have is this. You know, my concern has been, and, and I've... You know, no, I but, love, but you know, the view goes both ways. And, and India is also concerned about Canadian intervention, especially in the state of Punjab. And, uh, you know, another Canadian MP, Mr. Chandra Arya, he has also criticized, he belongs to the same party as uh, Mr. Trudeau. 
And he said that, you know, I can't understand how glorification of terrorism or a hate crime targeting a religious group is allowed in the name of freedom of speech and expression. Well, I, so, I think that, well, I was going to make a point which is somewhat similar um, because ultimately, um, you know, uh, freedom of expression is absolutely important. But if you uh, ha if you value the ties with uh, a, a fellow democracy um, uh, like India, it may be faulty. You know, no democracy is perfect, and India is perhaps faultier than uh, than others. Um, but if you think India is a friendly country, you say yes, freedom of expression. Any Canadian can say or demand anything, but the prime minister can say we, as a government, don't support any efforts to dismember India. But nobody's ever said that, right? So freedom of expression, yes. But at least they can clearly state that they're not in favor of any efforts to dismember India. But nobody's ever done that. Let's talk about Canada's leader of opposition, Pierre Polyev, who's someone who's, cons he's in fact been consistently hammering the Trudeau government for breaking down Canada with rising inflation, of course, the cost of living crisis, the housing crisis, including. He also came down heavily upon the Prime Minister after Prime Minister Trudeau returned from G20, where uh, Polyev also used the headline on the Toronto Sun page, which read this way out, and the description said, Trudeau finds he has few friends at G20 summit in India. Is not the Canadian Prime Minister buckling under pressure at the moment? Uh, under political pressure. I, I, I think there, some suspect that there is a large element Why not of economic pressure? You don't think no, that the, the no. economy is uh, one of the factors as well? Oh, of course, the economy is a factor. Housing is a factor. All of those issues are factors. So politically, he's facing uh, strong headwinds. And uh, therefore, there is some suggestion that the prime minister may have found this convenient to uh, this statement that he made in the House about India, uh, convenient to uh, distract people from his real problems, if that's what you mean. Yeah, of course, there is a sign. There is some sense of that. All right. Then, Mr. Dasanj, Punjab's wanted gangster Sukhdul Singh uh, Giri was shot dead by unidentified assailants on Wednesday. Rival gangsters Lawrence Bishnoi and Jaggu Bhagwan Puriya have claimed responsibility for Sukhdul's killing in separate Facebook posts. What does it speak of the rising organized crime in Canada under Trudeau's administration and the Canadian police's inability to tackle or control crime? Well, I think that, you know, the, the Khalistani elements and uh, the the gangs uh, in Canada there are some connection interconnections um, uh, amongst them um, it, it's it's amazing it's ironic that India has no India has no movement for Khalistan in Punjab I was in Punjab in May uh, just this last May a couple of months ago um, in my village there wasn't a saffron turban to be seen. Uh, and it's a big village. And so you, so it's ironic that you now have a burgeoning Khalistani movement in a country called Canada, along with Indian gangsters killing each other on Canadian soil. Um, and that is, uh, of course, that's a problem. Of course, that's a problem. Canada's main allies, including the United States and UK, have expressed concerns and called for investigations but they have refrained from openly condemning India. What explains the muted response of Canada's allies? Well, I think Canada's allies are India's allies at this moment uh, in the international environment. And I think that they have to uh, tread carefully. And uh, I've noticed that. And I think uh, Canada finds itself alone uh, for several reasons. But the main reason is that Mr. Trudeau uh, mishandled this issue from my perspective. You know, he's the Prime Minister of Canada. I'm a citizen of Canada. If he says something, I take him at his word. But if the RCMP on one hand are, you know, circulating these mug shots that they have picked up from security cameras of the people that have allegedly killed uh, uh, Mr. Nijer, and they're asking for people's help to identify those those killers and the driver of the getaway car, while 
Mr. Trudeau saying he has credible evidence to suggest India has done it. If India has done it, give us the goods. Charge the people. Unless you say these were Indian agents who flew into the country, did the dirty deed and then flew out. Of course, we we'll know better when the investigation comes to a closure. But how can now India and Canada avert a repeat of a situation that we both have witnessed back in the 80s where the divide between the Sikhs and the Hindus was disturbing and worrisome. Um, and you've been someone who's witnessed the entire movement very closely throughout the 70s and 80s. I'd like your thoughts. Well, I think that, you know, as I said before, I mean, India doesn't trust Mr. Trudeau. But, you know, Canada doesn't trust India either. In Canada has some serious concerns in terms of foreign policy issues, because, although these are domestic issues for, for India. I think that there are legitimate concerns about Mr. Modi's inaction on the violence against the untouchables and the Dalits and the Muslims and, and the Northeast. Don't you think that the lackadaisical approach of the Trudeau administration also has had a role to play? Because we've had Indian diplomatic missions uh, uh, being uh, vandalized. We've seen temples being vandalized. Uh, Indian diplomats have been threatened. There's the drug trade and the human trafficking gangs which are operating in the country that is also impacting the Indian state of Punjab directly. Oh, uh, look, absolutely. I mean, the gangster activity uh, that goes on uh, sort of with links in Punjab and links in Canada is, is absolutely horrible. It's as if like Canada has become a battlefield for Punjab. Uh, and, and it's gangsters. And uh, we need to do more. There, there's absolutely no question. The RCMP needs to do more. We as a country need to do more. Um, but, you know, these are issues that are ongoing. And uh, But if you, if you have hundreds of thousands of immigrants coming into the country every year, it kind of takes time to integrate them into the, into the larger society. On that note, uh, I'm going to have to end this discussion. Many thanks to you, Mr. Dasanj. It was a pleasure to have you here on CNN News 18. Thank you so much for taking up the time.